If you're looking to reduce your spend while overachieving on your marketing goals, then this is the video for you. In an age of barbecue and billion dollar budgets, it's easy to feel like we're falling behind if we're not spending the big bucks. Over 66% of businesses think that a limited budget is what's holding them back in marketing, but I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. There are so many things that you can do to market on a minuscule budget, and I'm gonna go through the three main ones that I think are top tips and show you how to make an impact with these three new marketing strategies. Now these three tactics I'm going to be taking you through today are leveraging your social media, enhancing your content marketing and exploring influencer collabs. All things you can do on a very, very small or non-existent budget. So let's start with the gift that keeps giving, social media. With billions of active users across multiple of platforms, social media is ripe for the picking for very little money. The potential for exposure is absolutely ginormous and it's completely free to set up an account. But where do you start? What is the best approach to harness the power of social, which is used by so many? First off, don't try and do everything. With billions of people online, you do not need to hit the millions. You just need a few hundred thousand. Find out where your audience are and pick two channels to absolutely kill it on. When you've picked your two channels based on where your audience are and where they spend their time, have a look at what your competitors are doing. See what other people in this space are creating. See what other people in this space are saying. See how people are reacting it. Give yourself a bit of research into what works on those two specific channels that you've chosen to kill it in. And then learn the channels themselves. There's huge nuances between TikTok and Instagram. There's huge differences between Twitter and threads. So make sure that the two platforms you've picked, you understand. You understand what's happening in the trends. You understand when's best to post. You understand everything because you know what your audience are and you know where they're using it. Immerse yourself in these two platforms as well. I like to pick platforms that I spend my social time on because you know things better when you're actually involved in them. Make sure you understand how people use it and how your people use it specifically. And then you need to make sure you've got a month's worth of posts or ideas before you even start setting up your social channels and what you're really hoping for here is something viral does anyone remember blend tech will it blend such a simple idea in fact such a free idea everything in this content series the only cost was from the thing that they were trying to blend no marketing money went into this no marketing spend no production spend no spend whatsoever apart from internal spend and a few props varying depend on what they were actually trying to blend at the time this campaign went viral and this campaign went viral for several reasons i'm going to take you through what actually makes content viral so what do we mean by viral content viral content is content shared widely from one user to another rapidly and organically online. And viral content tends to have one or more of these four things. It's entertaining, it's creative, it's valuable, it's thought provoking. It stops you in your tracks, it stops you scrolling, it makes you share. There is no surefire way to go viral. But Blendtec did a very good job by hitting all four of these things. Entertaining, no one had ever seen anyone blend some of the stuff they were blending. It was creative, it used their product properly in a very, very creative way. It was valuable because it was interesting and it was thought provoking. When you think about the fact that blenders are usually seen as one product, one silo thing, but actually there was a myriad of things that they brought into the fold to put their product alongside. Now, whilst there is no hard and fast rule for going viral, the best way to make sure you are being a bit more viral and you're ready for that virality and that online sharing is to solve a burning problem. And that is a problem that is incredibly hot topic. Second way is to find hacks to common problems. Problems that are more common than others are more likely to be shared, more likely to go viral. Another way is to bust a myth. People love a conspiracy theory. If you can bust a well-known myth, that is more likely to get shared organically. Another way to help you go viral is to involve yourself in a niche. People love to engage within the niches that they belong. They are more likely to engage further down a niche than they are to a wide audience. So the more niche you can go, the more engagement you will get. The more engagement within that niche you will get, the more sharing you will get. Therefore, the more chance you will ever go viral. Going viral is not a science, but these things do help push the virality and the shareability of content. And the shareability of content is what you're aiming for when you're trying to market on a budget. So the more shareable you can make your content, the better it will be, the more you will get for your money. So that's strategy number one, leverage your social media. Make sure that you are killing it on two channels, you know what that audience loves, and you are optimizing for organic virality. So the next thing is enhancing your content marketing. Content marketing doesn't have to be scary and expensive. In fact, the best things are usually the ones that are not the big production. With content marketing, when we think about enhancing our content marketing, we're not talking about putting money behind the cameras. We're not talking about enhancing the actual output. What we're talking about is reaching people with emotions. And this is often slept on. You want to drive emotional residents. You want to make sure that the stories you're telling are relatable 
to your audience. You want to reach people where they are and make them feel like they are like you. Tell human stories. Make yourself relatable. Make yourself vulnerable. Take people on a journey. Showing value and vulnerability doesn't cost you any money, but it brings your fans closer to you. All you need for this is an iPhone, a microphone, not even a microphone. Some of the best stories are told raw and emotionally and straight to camera, and you do not need any production costs. Some of the best content I've ever seen is purely from the heart, and it resonates with people because you get a glimpse into who somebody is. And that who somebody is, is a reason why people interact with your brand. So this second strategy is really, really about enhancing your content. It's enhancing your humanization. It's enhancing the feeling that people get. And enhancement is not better output, it's deeper resonance. And the third thing you want to do if you are marketing on a micro budget is explore people in your niche that are like you and like you. Influencer marketing has almost had a bad rap. I mean, we've got the 5S4 to blame for that, really. But finding people that your audience trust and care about and working with them in a very efficient way can drive growth. In fact, it will drive growth, but you need to approach this from a very sustainable way. Now, this is marketing on a minuscule budget, and I am a true believer in fair wages. So this is not a tip to go and try and work with an influencer for free. This is finding people within your niche who would greatly benefit from your product and giving it to them for free. So they're getting direct value. Although I've said working with influencers, this is more about ambassadors. This is not about taking people's time for free. This is about giving people value. And we need to focus on giving people value. So when you are marketing on a micro budget, what you want to do is to look for people within your niche. Look for people within your audience who genuinely your product or your brand provides value for. And then you give them that value for free. And you don't expect anything. You are just showing up in this person's life who has an audience who you know will also get value from your product. And you just give them the value. If you have done your market research and your product gives clear value to your audience, your product will give clear value to that member of your community and your niche audience as well. Hopefully, they will share that. It is not something that you can guarantee. What you are here to do is to give value away. Remember, when you are building a brand, when you are marketing, you are not taking from people, you are not asking them for something, you are giving them value, you are showing them value. This way of approaching influencer collabs is finding people who benefit from your product anyway and would probably purchase it or would love to purchase it or would find it really useful when they get it and giving it to them for free, giving them value. A lot of influencer campaigns that actually work are based on this theory, are based on the fact that people online, people who have a community, they want to share their journey. They want to share what they're doing. If something has a positive effect on their life, they will share it. This way of approaching influencers, less as influencers for exchange, more as how can I find people and genuinely add value to their life and hope that they share that because they have a community that's listening to them is an excellent way to market with limited funds. So these three things are really key to marketing on a minuscule budget. Anybody can do these. Anybody can set this up with absolutely no money whatsoever, just a bit of time and a bit of focus. Leveraging your social media by picking just two channels that you know will work and focusing in on them and trying those little tips to make that organically shareable. Enhancing your content marketing by driving home real human stories, interaction, and then finding people within your audience who will be an ambassador, who will have influence within your niche audience and giving them direct value. These three things are such huge marketing tactics that are often slept on for bigger campaigns, bigger productions, bigger influencers, bigger celebrities, and actually getting the fundamentals right will move the needle way more with your core audience. If you are just starting out and you want more information about tactics like this, please do go check out my course, go check out some of my tools and templates. I'm here to help you have good mornings and do great marketing. Please do subscribe and follow along.